everyone. So today I'm going to share with you how to create a stamp using your Glowforge Aura and Glowforge Premium. If there's enough requests for it, I will create a tutorial for how to do this in Inkscape in case you don't have Premium. But doing it in Premium is just so super simple. So I'm hoping that you'll find this tutorial useful and we'll give it a try. All right, now the first thing we're going to need to do is pick out some sort of image. So I've grabbed this from image library. You can take just about anything um, or you can import an image of your own. Then the next step we're gonna do is we're going to use the stamp maker feature to turn it into a stamp. Then we're gonna engrave and cut out our stamp out of a rubber stamp material. And then the last step will be to cut out some sort of stamp holder. In my case, I'm going to do this out of two pieces of wood and just glue the two pieces of wood plus the piece, the, the stamp that we cut out together. So it's three pieces to create an amazing stamp. Now, I've already created the stamp. And what I will say is that I originally did the standard um, padding for the stamp in the stamp maker. And I found that that's actually probably not ideal. I highly recommend making the padding a little bit larger so that you don't run the risk of accidentally dipping the corners of your stamp into your stamp um, stamp pad. So let me walk you through how to create the um, stamp in Stamp Maker, and then we'll go from there. So with our image selected, you'll come over to this little stamp icon and click on that. Now you're going to see padding, keep original artwork and add edge. The padding is essentially how far beyond the image it's going to engrave. So how much it's going to engrave on the outside and how far between the image and the cutout, if you choose to cut out, you'll have. So 0.25 seems to be the default that it goes to, but I would probably recommend about 0.4 because that's gonna give you a lot more space on the edges. It will also take longer to engrave, but it'll make for a better stamp so that you're less likely to get your edges in the stamp pad. Now keep original, I recommend toggling that. What that means is that after you've created your stamp, it'll keep this image. And I recommend doing that because let's say you wanna make a change or another version of it, you'll still have that image to work with. It won't replace it, it'll just add to it. And then add edge, I recommend toggling that. What that will do is it'll create a box around your image to cut so that you cut out your stamp from your piece of rubber. Now most pieces of rubber you can cut out with, um, with scissors. So if you wanna do this a little bit faster and more manually, you can avoid the add edge and just do that manually with scissors as well. An alternative would be to do add edge and have it cut fewer passes. So it essentially scores or cuts lightly um, the box around the image for you so you know where to cut and then you can grab your scissors and cut it from there. Of course, you can cut all the way through and those are the settings that I'll show you. Now, if you want the settings for this, they're going to be in my Facebook group and on my website um, for how to cut them with the Glowforge Aura. Really simple to do. And um, yeah, you'll just find the links in the post as well on how to get to those. I'll also share the specific uh, piece of rubber that I use so that you have the right settings for the right material, and this will just go super smoothly. All right, so now that we've selected our padding, we've toggled everything, go to create stamp, and it'll take really just a moment, and now you'll see you've got your stamp and you've got your original image here. Now, if you look at them, you'll notice two things. The stamp is essentially a mirror image of your original, which is what you want, because when you stamp it, it's going to reverse what you see on the stamp. So if you're doing text, for example, that's especially important. And with Glowforge Premium, you won't need to remember to do that step. It does it for you, which is wonderful. The other thing you'll notice is it basically creates an inverse of your image. So wherever there was negative space before, it's now going to engrave. And that's exactly what you want so that the thickness of the rubber where you have your image, where these lines are, will be untouched. It'll just engrave back everything else. So we are good to go. Now here's what we're going to do. We're gonna push this piece, the original image, off of the um, honeycomb tray, and that will effectively make the Glowforge ignore it. So we don't need to worry about that anymore. And then now we've got our two pieces here. So if you look at this, they're grouped, but if you come here on the left-hand side, you're gonna see over here, we have our stamp, and then here we have our cutout for the stamp. So this part that's the stamp, you're going to want to engrave that. And this part over here that's just the square, you're going to want to cut that. Now after we engrave and we cut these two parts, the next step you're going to want to do is cut pieces of wood 
for your stamp to adhere to so you have something to grab onto. When you get to that step, what you're going to do is go here, go ungroup, and then you're going to pull the stamp piece off of your mat, leaving just your square. Sorry, this should have been set to cut. Leaving just your square, and then you're going to duplicate this. So you'll right click, go to copy, and then do paste. And you're going to cut out two pieces of wood or any material of your choosing that are the same exact size. And then glue those two pieces along with the stamp cut out from the rubber to create your stamp. So let me show you how that all plays out, how it all looks. But this is really, really super simple. I'm just kind of trying to talk through it so that you know what to expect in just a moment. Um, but this doesn't take very long at all. So you just need your piece of rubber, a piece of wood or acrylic or whatever scrap that you've got. This is great for scraps and um, glue them all together. And then, of course, you're going to need some sort of ink pad. Um, I'll share with you the one that I'm using in this project, but any old ink pad will work as well. So let's head over to the GoForge machine and let me show you how this works. Mm -hmm. 